dude, come on. Look how natural that looks. Look at that. This is probably the best phone for photography on the market currently in the first half of 2023. This is the Xiaomi 13 Pro. Collaboration with Leica. This is the 12S Ultra Improved. Now I've been watching some video reviews that have been out there already covering the, uh, the Chinese version, which of course this is the global launch. And I had the 12S Ultra, we used it quite a bit. We did some videos here on the channel and the 12S Ultra was a great. I mean, this is the first collaboration between Leica and Xiaomi, one inch sensor, those vibrant Leica colors, all that stuff. But when it came to the ultra wide of the telephoto, things kind of fell apart because they weren't as strong. This time with a 13 Pro, all three cameras are 50 megapixel on the back. Now there's one that is a one inch sensor. It's a 23 millimeter F 1.9. But then for the telephoto, we have a 75 F 2. Then you have an ultra wide as well, which is also 50 megapixels. So when you look at the images, there's really not much of a discernible difference in terms of the quality. Now, of course, the sensors are different sizes, but with AI, with the color science, everything that is put inside of this, Xiaomi and Leica have done an amazing job. On top of that, as I was just showing you, the portrait mode on this thing is nuts. This thing acts like and produces images that you would not know came from a smartphone. The way that the fall off hits, uh, bokeh, the depth of field, it is, I've never seen something this good out of a smartphone and I've tried them all. All right, let's talk display on this thing. You got a 6.73 inch OLED display, high resolution, 120 Hertz refresh rate on this. You've got 12 gigabytes of RAM in the unit that we have, 512 gigabytes of storage as well. So this is a packed phone, 4,820 milliamp battery. And give you pretty much all day battery life, depending how you use it. But if you use the camera quite a bit, it's going to drain and you're going to want to use the camera quite a bit on this. But you do have fast charging, wireless charging as well. And like other phones out there that come from China, there is a charger in the box. What else? 32 megapixel selfie camera on this. Now the selfie camera is decent. We'll show you some images. I mean, it's pixel binning. The 32s, the 40s and all that kind of stuff when it comes to the front facing camera. Honestly, a lot of it's marketing hype but it is the rear cameras that are the star of this show. Anyway, let's walk around Zaki. Let's take some photos. Beautiful morning, great light. We got blue skies. It's a rarity here in Singapore this time of year. Let's take some street photographs. Now on the camera, you can go up to 70 times zoom. Honestly speaking, it's a little bit, uh, I wouldn't use this image. That looks, that doesn't look good. No, he's not putting that on his Tinder profile. Anyway, he's on it date with somebody else. Maybe he won't need Tinder. Look, let's be frank. This 70 times, 200 times, 100 times zooms, it's a gimmick. It's fun if you want to like be a little bit of a voyeur or use it as, let's say, binoculars, but I wouldn't use photos for it, right? Use what the camera has naturally inside of it, okay? Once you get into this digital zoom like this, it all looks like crap. Forget the 70 times zoom. Just walk up closer and take a photo. It looks so much better. Now we're gonna to go to 50 megapixel mode here. Notice it, all three lenses, 50 megapixel, baby. Look at the colors on that. Look at the colors. That's with the main camera. Ultra wide. Telephoto. And what's nice is the Xiaomi has now matched the colors to all three of these cameras. Usually on a lot of smartphones, the main camera looks great. When you go the ultra wide, hmm, and the telephoto, huh. This, all three, the color science, the colors all match. It's beautiful. So we're gonna try video on the front facing camera here and we're looking at the settings. Again, only 1080, 30 FPS. Unfortunately, Xiaomi has not adopted 4K yet for the front facing camera, but it does look pretty good. And you do actually have an F-stop here so you can adjust the bokeh if you want to do that. So I'm gonna to go to F 2.5. Try this out right now. And this is the front facing camera here on the Xiaomi 13 Pro. I will say that in terms of dynamic range, the sky is completely blown out. So in terms of the metering, it's a little bit off, but the image looks pretty good. It looks sharp. We'll see how the audio is right now. So we're gonna try this without using any sort of a depth of field mode on the front facing video camera. So now we're using the rear camera here on the 13 Pro. 
And I turn off HDR because HDR is just a little bit too aggressive on this. But again, it does a decent job. We've got some sun peeking through here. How does that handle the sun coming over my shoulder? How do the colors look? This is something that you would definitely use for video. Let me know. All right, that was 1080. Now we're going to 4K 24P on the rear cameras. And I like that they have 24P on this because sometimes on Android phones, they actually just do 30 and 60. You have to use a pro mode to go into 24, but in this camera app, it's there. Hopefully it looks better than the 1080. The 1080 was a little bit too much. The HDR was crazy. So let's see how this fares. And plus we've got sun coming in. So we're really testing the camera, how it performs with backlight and lighting situations. How does it look like without Dolby Vision? Which would you prefer? Love to hear from you guys based on these two video samples here. Again, 4K 24P, El Natural coming out of the camera, no Dolby Vision. All right, now we got AK 24P. Xiaomi is thinking cinema, 24P, that's what you want to shoot, or 23.98. The cinema, but 24 is pretty much where you want to go with this. The colors are a little bit more vibrant than some other phones out there. And this is, of course, going to be a look. You can tone that, a little bit, you know, tone that down a little bit in post, but I got to say it adds a little bit of character, a little bit of a look. It's not as aggressive as the 12S Ultra. So to compare it to that phone, to this, this is a much more toned down, but still has that uh, Leica color, that vibrancy. Again, it's just color science, but you're seeing that here in the phone. And the AK looks actually pretty good. I would definitely use this. A cool feature in this is we got teleprompter mode. This is interesting because let's say you want to talk about a product. Let's say I want to talk about these palettes. Sometimes we can't remember these things. That's why we do multiple takes when I do these videos. But now with teleprompter mode, I can actually talk about it and it's recording at the same time. So people are going to go, wow, you're so eloquent with your words. How do you make it work? Teleprompter mode. Looking for a reliable, eco-friendly solution for your shipping and storage needs? Look no further than our high quality wood pallet. Choose from a variety of sizes and styles to find your perfect fit for your business and enjoy competitive pricing and fast delivery. Contact us today to order your premium wood pallets. All done by ChatGPT, thanks Zach. Here at Geek Culture, we've tested plenty of chairs, but Secret Lab gaming chairs remain one of our favorites. Whether it's for work or play, they feel great to lean back against, with their ergonomic features offering support for the whole body, from the head and back to the arms and even something for your butt. This mix of form and function helps the Titan EVO 2022 deliver the best seating experience like no other. For more information, check out secretlab.co. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Have you seen a smartphone shoot like this before? Come on. 75 F2. One of the most exciting features for me personally as someone who loves photography is the portrait mode in the 13 Pro because this unlocks the Leica part of this camera system. Now Leica has been working with Xiaomi on the entire thing, but this is where you get to play with the different lenses and the different looks. Case in point. When we go into portrait mode, you click on this icon to the left, you have black and white, swirly bokeh, portrait, and soft focus. But each of these represent a different look and a different focal length that is very reminiscent of what Leica offers in their lens lineup. Case in point, black and white is a 35 1.4, which is a Sumalux shot in black and white because that is pretty much the de facto street photographer's lens. The black and white is gorgeous, it is beautiful. Unfortunately, you can only use the black and whites with a 35 1.4 focal length on this. So if you want to do 75, we want to do some sort of zoom or ultra wide, you can't as of right now, at least from what I'm seeing here currently in this um, setup. When we go to the swirly bokeh, which is 50 millimeters, which represents the Noctilux. Now you can't adjust the bokeh on each of these. They're sort of preset, but it's going to give you that Noctilux look, which is beautiful. If you ever shot with a Noctilux, it's usually F.95 or F1 or F1.2, and you're going to get a beautiful depth of field, but it's got a character to it, which is interesting. Then we go into portrait mode, which is a 75 F2. This is much more of a modern rendering portrait lens. I've shot a lot of my images with this. It looks great how it just resolves the background, the depth of field to the foreground. It's gorgeous. It's awesome to see. And then we go into what's called the 90 millimeter soft focus, which, which is going to represent the like a thumb bar lens. Now, for those who have never used this lens, it's basically like putting Vaseline on the front of your front element of your lens and shooting with it. It is swirly, nothing is sharp. It is as, it's very character driven. It looks like a cheap lens, 
But for a lot of collectors out there, they search high and low for the thumb bar because it offers something different and something unique. Case in point, here's a guy on the bike right here. And that's your end result with the 90 millimeter. Not everybody's gonna like it. It's not a hugely popular lens. Some collectors love it, but it's something different. But it's actually really, really cool. Final thoughts on this phone. I absolutely love it as a photography tool. It's creative, it's fun, it produces awesome images. I love the Leica collaboration. It's even more refined here than in the 12S Ultra. And you're still getting that one inch sensor for the main camera, which is great. But now all three cameras are 50 megapixel. In terms of video, it's okay. I definitely think that there probably are better Android phones and other, you know, even the iPhone is probably better for video as it stands right now. But I think this camera strength is in its photography. So if you're someone who likes to take more photos than videos, I definitely recommend this. You still can get good video out of this, don't get me wrong. And I'm sure with firmware updates, they will improve as time goes on because we're still have this, we still have this in advance. It's kind of a pre-release version. But as it stands right now, to me, optically, photography, this is probably the best camera system on a smartphone for the first half of 2023 for photos. You're gonna love this. Anyway, those are my thoughts. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button and check out more of our reviews right here. She wants to as well. <laughs>